The sequence of how you do things is very important. Well, in this system, the sequence is this order. When you put money onto the income, into the income account, remember, it's a cash turkey. You never eat off the serving tray. We allocate money. Always allocate money to the profit account first. Because, and this is the letter R, it says reward, because it's a reward mechanism. If you have a bookkeeper or accountant managing your books right now or managing your accounts, I encourage you just for the, if you set the system up for a period of time, do this yourself. Because when you allocate, you know, 10%, say $1,000 comes in, you allocate 10%, 100 bucks to profit, you'll feel reward. Huh, I just made a profit, 100 bucks, cash, sitting there, for me. It's a dopamine release. Next one is you're gonna pay the most important employee in the company, which is you, the business owner. Another reward mechanism, dopamine release. So it's a behavioral response, reward, reward. Paying taxes, shockingly, is not a reward, um, in case you didn't know, but it does protect you from getting, going to jail, so it's a protection mechanism. So it's reward, 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 protect, and the OPEX account is serve. It serves your business. So the sequence of how we do things is extremely important. Um, that's the answer to number six. The sequence, the word is sequence, of how things are presented dictate our use of those things. If we take our profit first, we'll assure our profitability. And it'll embolden us to do more of it because we're doing it first. Reward mechanism. Now onto the third step. So I'm watching this fitness instructor. She starts talking about temptation. You know, she's talking about temptation with food. And uh, she explains that the only way to prevent the consumption of something is not through willpower. It's through removing its accessibility in the first place. Willpower is like a muscle. It fatigues. You can put a chocolate chip cookie in front of me, and I'll look at it, and I'm actually trying to prepare for a athletic event with my son. He wants to do the Spartan race um, you know, with a 47-year-old, and he's 17. Um, he, he's still eating Cheerios and is still gonna kick my ass. Um, but I've hired a coach, and the coach said, first thing is get off bad carbs, start doing this, lift weights, blah, blah, blah. There is no cookies in my house, because I can't stop myself. I play the same game every time. I go, oh, I really shouldn't, but it doesn't hurt to smell the soft baked chew chocolate chip triple chunk cookies. I sniff it, and, and then the game's over, and I eat it. So there's none there. And actually, I couldn't find any here. I really looked around. <laughs> yeah. Um, remove the temptation. Here's what we need to do in your business. Whatever bank you work with today, if you like them, keep working with them. We'll call this bank one. We need to find a second bank, we'll call it bank two. And the goal of bank two is it's a remove temptation bank. I encourage you to set two accounts there. One's gonna be called profit hold. One's gonna be called tax hold. The idea is the money that accumulates, when you allocate profit, we're gonna invoke a transfer over to the second bank, same thing with taxes, to get out of sight and out of mind. Here's the, if you didn't do this, here's the problem I ran into right away. I ran, I was running my business, I looked at my OPEX account, I looked at my bills, I didn't have enough money to pay my bills. I looked at my profit account, and said, oh, there's cash there, maybe I'll just borrow from my profit account. The, the second you do that, uh, rename profit to Peter, and we'll rename OPEX to Paul, because you're stealing from Peter to give to Paul. It, it, unwind, it unwinds the whole system if we steal from ourselves. And that's what I did. I borrowed from profit, never paid it back. But once it was out of sight and out of mind, I couldn't see my profit, then I had to figure out how to make it work off of this. And, it, and if you don't have enough money to pay your bills at this stage, that's your business telling you you can't afford your bills. If you can't pay your bills, you can't afford your bills. That's your business speaking to you, saying, if you want to achieve 10% profit, if you want to pay yourself fairly and appropriately, if you don't want to worry about taxes, this is what you must do. I was in New York City teaching this a few years back to an audience and uh, similar to this, and uh, this one guy comes up to me at the end of the presentation, he goes, hey, I really enjoyed the profit first presentation, I'm gonna do it. And uh, I said, oh, that's great, tell me about your business. He said, I have an $8 million business, which I hope, starting today, when you hear revenue, you put no weight into that. I don't care how much revenue anyone has. What I care about is how healthy the business is. So I said, oh, that's great, eight million, but tell me, how healthy is your business? He goes, ah, we lost half a million dollars last year. Say, so, okay, what was the year prior? Ah, we lost a million dollars that year. He goes, we have so much debt, he goes, I'm about to go out of business. He goes, the reason I'm telling you how to do this system is not because I believe in it, because I'm so skeptical of this. He goes, but I'm desperate. I'll try it out. And I wouldn't be surprised if some of you are skeptical. I, I was skeptical. I had to do this out of desperation. I hope you're willing to give it a try, but I appreciate and respect the skepticism. And uh, his name was Peter. We've become very good friends now. We actually talk to him every Friday. And uh, 
He called me about three months after setting the system up. He set these accounts up at a second bank. I just want to share his story because I think you can leverage what he did. He's in New York City, like I told you. He found a bank in New Jersey. Step one is find a bank that is far from you. It was about a three hour drive for him to get there. Um, I call it the drive of shame, by the way, because if you're driving there and you want to take profit out for any other reason besides rewarding the shareholder, celebrating with, if you're trying to borrow or steal from yourself, that should be a drive of shame. So I want you to think about it. He went into the bank, the second bank, and uh, he walked up to the teller and said, hey, I want to set up some new accounts here because I'd like to store money at your bank. <laughs> I don't know if you know this. There's a, a button, you know, those tellers have there. If someone's going to rob the police, right? There's another button when someone says, I'd like to store money at the bank, apparently, because that tower hit the button. Because the manager comes running out, fixing his tie. He's, you know, he's like, oh, welcome to the most convenient bank in America. We love when people want to store money with us. <laughs> and uh, Peter, uh, he goes on to tell Peter, he's like, you know, we have ATM card, starter check, online bank. We have a limousine packed with cash. We'll drive wherever we want to go. And uh, Peter looks at him square in the eyes and says, I don't want the most convenient bank in America. I want the most inconvenient bank in America. No starter checks, no online banking, no ATM card. Because the only way I can withdraw money is if I drive three hours to get here and I ask you, the bank manager, to write me a certified banker's check to share my profit. And he goes, if I do that, please slap me in the face a few times to make sure I really deserve this money. <laughs> Set something up like that. Remove the availability of the cash so you have to live off of a near empty tube of toothpaste and you will blow your mind away of how profitable your business will become.